think I think Paul's greatest point there was about the two offensive coordinators. We all, it takes time to develop, right? Their, their quarterback shows, and this was not a – don't let the school score fool you. I think it was seven points in the third quarter, seven-point lead. So they tacked on some cheap ones late or, or got some, some, some ones late. But I think Paul's point about their, their schedule, that's facts as well. NC State, they, they almost got beat by ECU. ECU missed a, missed a kick and an extra point, I think. That ended up causing, so everybody on their schedule is definitely beatable. I would say this. The, the scariest one to me would be Notre Dame, to his point. The other one would be Miami because of how late it is in the season mm. and how has how has Crystal Ball done with that Miami football team bringing them along and will they play with that physicality that I expect them to play with so that those two to me I think they I think they come through wake I think they come through uh, NC State again I think give Dabo Sweeney credit it was an ugly game gave up 10 points defense is always going to keep you in games like this a lot of teams struggled this weekend. I was at the App State UNC game. They mm. won 63-61, ugly. NC State barely hang on against ECU. You should have. So there's nobody in the ACC that really scares you if you're Clemson, uh, other than that Notre Dame and then potentially that Miami team late in the season. And that's exactly why I hope you and Paul Feinbaum <laughs> are correct because I love my man Dabo, but I'm not convinced. I'm not sold. I mean, I got concerns oh. about Clemson, and here. Here's the reason why. Number one, your weakness of schedule. Your streak, I call it a weakness of schedule. Because when you're, think, when you're thinking about those playoff teams, particularly with the specter of 12-team playoff coming down the pike, they say for the moment it's 2026, we're hopeful they'll move it up a couple of years or whatever. We all know they should, yes. no doubt about that. But because they know it's coming, now they'll prioritize the best teams even more, and they may hold your schedule against you. So now here's where it gets interesting. First of all, you got Furman, Louisiana State, let's say Wake Forest, <laughs> and, and North Carolina State, like you just said, had their problems with ECU. Let's throw those next four weeks out of the way. Damn it, it might be four bye weeks. We ought to have a bye Don't month for crying crazy. out loud, okay? So then we go to this step. <laughs> now, we can't dismember. We don't respect Boston College because they've had some thrillers in the past. Florida State. Just beat LSU. Is it because Florida State is that good? What if LSU proves to be god-awful in Brian Kelly's first year mm -hmm. in Louisiana? That's problematic because, again, that will dilute the win that Florida State had. And if they are good, then that's a challenge that Clemson's going to have to deal with. Then we go down the list. Notre Dame. We saw Notre Dame. Their defense, I thought, was impressive against Ohio State. Offensively, they leave a lot to be desired. And, of course, Miami. Meanwhile, we got the SEC, bro. We got Alabama. Okay, <laughs> we got Georgia, Texas A&M. I mean, I personally think that Jimbo Fisher running his mouth, not that he wasn't justified because Nick Saban should have never mentioned his name, but my <laughs> God, when they come to Tallahassee, it's going to be a problem for Texas A&M. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, Paul Feinbaum, <laughs> you and I can text that Saturday morning. Well, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.